What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Dota 2 Raid Colleague, brought to you by One More Game TV, EG, AC, all those guys doing a fantastic job bringing you a top-notch tournament, featuring all of the West's best teams. And keep in mind, if you buy a ticket, some of the money will be directly donated back into the teams. So if there was a ticket, six bucks is a bit more expensive than usual, but considering the price of tickets have been skyrocketing, I think this ticket is very well worth your while. Best of threes all throughout the tournament. And this is game two of Empire vs. DD. As you can see, I turned up the volume as I'm used to casting on my B-Bond account. But considering the tournament passes are on the Dota commentaries account, actually the master volume is a bit lower. But I turned up the volume, so actually hopefully the audio levels will be a bit better. As I was a bit unsure to... Because I turned on my expo volume, but unfortunately, the game volume seems to be still quite low. But I turned on the massive volume, so hopefully you can hear that game noise that you so know and love that Valve put so much time and effort into getting the best it can possibly. So hopefully you can hear it a bit better. But DD had a pretty strong early game lineup. Unfortunately, their positioning just wasn't there in some of the games. DD actually going to bat the Jakiro, saying, all right, we can deal with the Darks here, but the Darks here acts Ice Path combination just too strong. Keep in mind, D do have first pick. And Empire, will they ban out the Undying or the Magnus? They're going to have to pick their poison here. I feel like Undying, not really as strong a hero in this version, since a lot of the bugs were fixed, and since uh, his decay was nerfed in terms of damage, but he's still extremely powerful, and he's just really annoying to deal with in general. And that's why I love to play him. I love to play heroes that just piss the other team off. That's why I love to play Barret and Undying. And keep in mind, I'm going to be a Dota hipster right here. I was playing Undying and Bat before they even got buffed. So these other guys, they're just mainstream. Yeah. But Empire actually just going to bat the NA. So they're going to leave Magnus and Undying in the pool. And it looks like Magnus is going to be a be the pickup by DD. Will Empire respond with Magnus? Still a very powerful hero, even with the skewer nerfs. But now he can just go in the mid lane rather than just solo the off lane so easily. And he could still potentially solo the off lane, just has to be a bit more careful than he otherwise would be. But Empire are going to pick up the Undying for themselves. Will they round it out with something like a TA? I think TA could be a solid choice. They're going to pick up the Darkseer. Darks here definitely a solid choice in any scenario. They have their offlane hero, and they have a lot of crowd control for the T fights. Vacuum, one of the best spells in the game. That's why it has a long cooldown. But still, ridiculously useful in all aspects of the game. But now if they have to contend with a Magnus, who has a vacuum, as well as a stun, as well as carry potential, as well as a solid nuke, all on one hero. Pretty ridiculous. Meanwhile, DD, what will they spawn with? They start picking up heroes for the try and Will they go with Sven? Uh, Sven, potentially pretty powerful, but I feel like against Dark Sir, Sven isn't really as effective. Uh, Sven, if he gets kited around, really just, you can wait out his BKB charge, and then you can just sort of focus him down. But Sven, definitely a very, very solid pickup in most scenarios. But I don't know if it necessarily finished DD's playstyle. DD, I uh, like to go a bit more early game Sven. Definitely a powerful early game hero, but won't really seal the deal. As Luna's going to pick up, as well as a Venomancer, we're seeing a lot less Venomancer since his Venom scale nerfs. Can it actually cast that Gale twice at level 1 like he could do before? But still, very powerful early game hero. Does have one of the better slows in the game, 50% at all levels with that Venom scale for a pretty long duration. And we'll see if DD can work with the Luna a little bit better. I think what cost DD in the last game was not just the positioning, but the fact that Luna got BKB after Helm of the Dominator. We'll see if uh, Didi makes that mistake again. Will they go for early game? Will they get something like a Chen? It really depends on Empire's picks and bans at this stage. You know, Empire, they have a component of their trial lane. They have their offlane hero. We'll see if Funic dies as many times as Luna before. Maybe they're like, okay, Funic, you can die as many times as you want because we did win that game. But I'm sure Funic does not want to go 0 and 7 to start off the game like he did in the previous game. I think Empire would do well to pick up their mid soul, otherwise DD would just start banning out heroes like Queen of Pain and other heroes like that who can give Magnus a lot of problems. But keep in mind, Darkseer, very capable mid soul hero himself. 
And the fact that Magnus is melee means that Iron Shell will do a lot of harassment to him, but Empire is going to pick up their midsole right now in the form of Queen of Pain. Really under no threat will she die to Magnus in the mid lane, most likely, but as long as Magnus plays his card right, Magnus won't really die either. Shockwave harassment, if he manages to hit the Queen of Pain, will drain pretty much half of Queen of Pain's HP right off the bat. So Magnus can do a solid job keeping up the Queen of Pain. Won't be able to win the lane because of the range advantage, because of the animation, because of Blink. But should not die, theoretically. And there's a Brute on the band. Meanwhile, Didi going to bounce to Spectre saying, Alright, Spectre, Dark Seer, just too annoying to deal with. Especially with the Queen of Pain, you have solid mid-game, you have solid early game. We're not going to give you a very solid late game to back that up. So they're just going to remove the Spectre from the equation altogether. Pretty smart ban, in my opinion. Meanwhile, Empire banning out the Broodmother, so they're going to try to reduce the pushing power. As you can see, DD starting to ban out all the hardest carries they can possibly ban. Wouldn't be surprised to see a Clinks ban. Empire love using that Clinks when... And Clinks not really in too much danger of getting caught in reverse parity, just because Clinks often just waits outside of his team and then just blinks or runs in with the Orchid and then just goes to town. And it is a known favor of Blow Your Brain. But still, DD can only ban so many hard carries. Phantom Lancer, I feel like with Void and Spectre, probably the hardest carry in the game. Um, and Void with Darkseer and Queen of Pain will definitely give DD fits. So Void, it seems to me, will be the smart ban in this situation. Meanwhile, Empire, knowing that Puck pretty much owned Queen of Pain in the last game, Going to remove that from the equation, just saying, all right, we're going to force your mag to go mid lane, most likely, or to send an offensive trial And Luna Veno is a pretty powerful offensive trial but Undying, very, very strong in the trial is in his own right. And there is the Void ban, so no Darkseer Sonic Wave action for the side of Empire. I think that was probably the smartest ban that DD could have done in that scenario. And Rubik's going to be banned by Team Empire, so going to eliminate one of the supports. Here comes a pickup by Sven. So we're going to see the Sven Magnus combination that gave the last version so much annoyance. So it's going to be most likely... How are they going to lane this? Are they... They're probably going to do a safe lane Luna with the Sven, Veno, and one other hero on the trial lane. That's what I have to imagine. Empire are going to pick up a tree. Tree? <laughs> Why did they pick him up with the fourth pick? Why did they pick up tree? I'm not sure. Maybe Tree is a counter to Sven? Is he counter to Mag? I guess if Sven pops a BKB, you can root him to the ground? I think Tree just doesn't do enough. Like, unfortunately, you know, I was on... When 676 was introduced and Living Armor got buffed, I was like, oh my god, Tree's so imba, but... Uh, after playing him, and after see, uh, seeing other teams play him, Tree just doesn't do enough in terms of damage. Melee Hero does have ridiculous base damage, so can solo lane by himself, but, I mean... He's not going to solo lane. Could be pretty useful in terms of turning out the game, so maybe Empire just going for a really, really late game strat. And that does not really fit Empire's playstyle. They like to be very, very aggressive in the early stages of the game. Windrunner is going to round out the picks by DD. Pick. Actually, I think DD are going to go with support Sven. They're going to offlane Windrunner, mid lane Magnus, and do support Sven tri lane. So they're not going to give Sven any farm, and Empire are going to go late game. They are going to pick up Weaver. Weaver, one of the most annoying heroes to kill. Um, but unfortunately, not the best range, so Magnus still has a reasonable time catching him in the reverse polarity. Nobody on the side of DD is going to pick up anything like a Hex or an Orchid right off the bat. So Weaver should be pretty safe, as long as he doesn't get shackled. Should be able to time lapse. Of course, if he gets storm bolted, it's shackled and reverse play, but other than that, those are the only disables, so I think Weaver is a pretty solid pickup in this scenario. I'm just curious at Tree's role. Tree, I think his job will just be to heal the buildings and just keep them up as long as possible and hope Empire can just win the late game, but Undying doesn't really get stronger as the game goes on, so this is a pretty weird lineup. I don't know how this synergizes whatsoever. Vacuum into Overgrowth will act as a pseudo vacuum into Ice Path, but Ice Path, I think, uh, with the lower cooldown, just more useful, and with the larger range, just a lot better than Overgrowth in conjunction with the Vacuum. Overgrowth a, be a lot better when the other teams spread out, but other than that, I'm not too sure about Tree's role in this game. As I swear to god, I turned free camera on, but apparently Dota 2 replays always have that problem.
But now it's time to introduce the players and teams. We have Link playing the Luna. Once again, Calculus is playing the Windrunner. You can see Crit playing the Sven. So Crit played offlane Windrunner in the last game, but he's playing the Sven this game. Ryze is going to be playing the Venomancer. So Calculus and Ryze. So I guess they're going to do safe lane Sven. The players playing different heroes could mean something, because Ryze usually is a support player. He is going to play support lane Windrunner. Chen was played by Calculus in the last game, so he was jungling. But actually, it could be a mind game in and of itself. Unfortunately, the Eternal Envy commentary, which I could not upload because my voice got deleted because of the crash of XSplit, meaning that it's basically one and a half hour recording. Uh, but it's pretty a good analysis nonetheless, um, if you just want to hear Eternal Envy's case. But I'm not going to upload it because it's just Eternal Envy talking to itself for one and a half hours because I can't hear my voice at all. But basically, what he said is that, you know, Players picking the heroes can definitely mean a lot in the game, so other teams can often play mind games on the other team. Uh, I think in that game, it was Hani was playing the Magnus, and they expected Hani to go mid lane, but Hani actually went for the off lane, so that actually threw No Tyrant for a bit of a loop right there. So the players playing a different hero could definitely be a mind game in and of itself. But I'm not too sure how DD will lane this. I think Support Sven is going to be likely in this game. Meanwhile, on the side of Empire, we have Goldock playing the Undying. We have SS playing the other hero in the game. <laughs> oh my god. It's going to be Scandal playing the Tree. It's going to be the Lawyer Brain playing the Weaver. And Funic is going to be playing the Queen of Pain. And I'm just going to fast forward the replay so hopefully we can get into this action a bit more quickly. But yeah, just going to wait on these teams, Cyberina, Best Club, EU. So it looks like Empire just saying, you know, shout out to our land cafe. But hey, Didi. Both teams very, very polite. Let's say on the European server, I think if it was on like something like the American server, both teams would be a bit more grumpy. But Empire going to have another player disconnect. And we'll see how this game goes. I think Empire, their best option is just a turtle, so Weaver gets as much farm as possible. But think about Sven Magnus. All they need is one hit. One hit with that critical strike. One reverse polarity. And they pretty much win the game. That's the annoying part about dealing with Sven Magnus. And with the Luna to back it up with the increased damage, with that Eclipse, sealing everybody in place into that reverse polarity. This is a pretty dangerous alpha by DD, and I'm not really sure what Empire's lineup is designed to accomplish. I don't necessarily think it wins lanes. Undying usually can win lane by himself. Uh, Queen of Pain usually wins mid lane by herself, but Weaver and Tree... Weaver a pretty strong laning hero because that Shikuchi means he can survive a lot, but he really wants to level that up so he can have that spamable cooldown. Tree, I mean, the heal is pretty useful, but actually... Even though it gets a charge does get removed by creeps, actually the creeps still do damage, even if the charges are on them. So the tree uh, charge of that living armor, even if creeps hit you, the creep damage goes through and the living armor gets reduced by a tick. So that's a bit of an annoying hindrance for tree. I think if that was amended, so if the creeps do hit you, you get a charge removed, but at least you get the damage block, that would be a bit more useful of a skill. But as it is living armor, Definitely underwhelming, but if you can put it on the Queen of Pain, Queen of Pain should pretty much control the mid lane with relative ease. Just going to fast forward it up again. And I think a lot of reliance will have to go on the SS. Funic is not going to play the Darkseer. SS is actually going to play the Darkseer in this game. And they really need to count on Darkseer getting a decent amount of levels. Avoid dying like he did so often in the previous game. As more pause shenanigans are going on. Empire getting a little bit miffed. I'm sure they're thinking, alright, let's just make this a 2-0 sleep so we can go back home, drink some vodka, get back to sleep. <laughs> Scandal. All PCs here. But, yeah. They're going to really have to rely on SS getting some clutch vacuums, get a lot of experience, get a decent amount of farm as well. And he might be hard pressed to do it if there's a challenge against him, but I think it might be wiser for DD to go for an aggressive challenge in this game with Venomancer, Luna, and Sven. 
but they definitely have the possibility to go with the Windrunner offlane and do the safe trialing of Venom and Sven. Sven. And Sven, definitely a capable support now. I mean, Luminous hates it, but Luminous is always wrong at everything, as we all know. Your mom is so big that vacuum can't suck it in. <laughs> oh my god. Dota jokes. You gotta love them. Wagamama. <laughs> Yo mama, or Wagamama. Shouts to Waga. But yeah, Sven, definitely a capable support, because you do sort of have to focus him now, because he will just do a lot of damage otherwise. He still has a stun. And Sven, support. I mean, there are definitely better supports, but if you want a tanky support who can hit hard and have some relevance after the early stage in the game, then Sven might be your support for you. The downside for support Sven is that you can only cast one Storm Bolt for quite a long time. So that's a bit of an issue for Sven, until I think he gets like level 3 or level 4. But still, that AoE of Stormbolt, pretty ridiculous, and the fact that he does a lot of damage with that God Strength definitely helps him out in a support role. He definitely sort of have to kill him, unlike most supports where you can just ignore and just focus everybody else. So, just going to speed this up some more, because, oh, here comes the reconnect. And looks like everybody, I'm sure, is going to get this game underway. And I think if you want other VODs of this, I tried finding the AC YouTube channel, but AC YouTube channel actually doesn't have the VODs from this tournament up. And the One More Game TV 2 channel on YouTube doesn't have it up either. So that's a bit unfortunate, but if you do want to check out the VODs, you have to check out twitch.tv slash one more game tv 2 I think. Um, I don't know. I think somebody will have to talk to AC to make sure those VODs are uploaded onto YouTube. And actually, Empire are going with aggressive trying with Darkseer. They're going to do the Iron Shell Shikuchi shenanigans? I don't know about this. It's gonna be it's gonna be mid lane tree. Safe lane queen of pain. I mean tree can definitely handle himself in the mid lane. He has so much damage. 85 base damage with a stout shield, and I think he got the courier as well. Actually, I don't think he got the courier, he's just saving up for that fastball. And here comes the weaver. And this is some wonky laning composition by Empire, and I love it. Actually I don't love it, because I don't know what this laning compositions do. Like it pretty much relies on the Weaver Ion Shell gimmick. But once that gets solved, like. Honestly, I guess the Dark Suit can sort of jungle. As you can see, SS stop canceling that Ion Shell. Like a boss. And Sakshka is going to be in the lane. Calculus is going to be in the off lane. And it is going to be Sports and Tri lane. Invisibility. But yeah. Not too sure. Because it's two melees and a hero with four in range, but they are against Aluna, who doesn't have the best range, Venomets, who doesn't have the best range, so I guess harassment won't really be too big of an issue in either case. But you can see the D ward being placed by Ryze right off the bat. I think it did scout the Absorb ward just barely, but Darkseer maneuvering himself nicely. Definitely does not want to be caught in an awkward position against the Darkseer. Pull down the last hits tab. That is the hero tab. That is the XP per minute. That is the last hit tab. You can see Tree with his ridiculous 85 attack damage already picking up two last hits. Um, Mag versus Tree. Pretty much never sees. I imagine Tree can hold his own, but no way in a million years will Tree ever kill Magnus. Ever. Ever. Unless he gets like double damage and haste. Meanwhile, Windrunner kills himself to neutrals because this is apparently high level game. I guess he got an uh, underestimated Queen of Pain, but Queen of Pain's level 1. May just went two balls to the wall. But it looks like there's going to be engaged and Living Armor is going to be casted. Weaver trying to go back in. Shikuchi, the Ash are going to go switch to Crit. But Crit is just so tanky support Sven. Best support in the game for a reason. This is why Luminous loves him. And Goldbox is going to cut around the Venomancer, stealing so much of Venomancer's strength. Only one stack, but you can see Venomancer only at 200 HP. And only has 450 base HP, but Luna's just happily farming away. Tree is farming as well, but, I mean, it's a tree. Like, what will Tree farm? I guess fast Shivas? Fast Refresher? I mean, 
in the old days when Tree Farm, you get that Radiance, but you have a Weaver on your side who ideally wants to get that Radiance. Um, Mask of Madness in pub games, but he has 1.9 base attack speed. So I'm not too sure what tree will go for in this game. That makes a bunch of sense. Refresher, I mean, your ultimate does no damage now and has a low enough cooldown that Refresher is pretty much unnecessary. So yeah, not too sure what tree will farm for, but I don't imagine it'll be anything good. As Shikuchi's going to fly back in, and I think the gimmick has been stopped. You just push the wave a bit, and Weaver's just going to farm it up. I think it might be wise for Darkseer just to go to the jungle. Weaver theoretically should not die. I think Weaver could potentially just solo lane by himself if he really had to. The only thing he has to worry about is that Sven Stormbolt. And yes, Shikuchi did mitigate a lot of the Venomancer's slow. Picks up something like a magic stick. But here comes the Iron Shell Shikuchi combination. Gonna go in on Luna. Luna juking as best as she can. She actually does get away. Luna, 330 base wound speed. And there's a reason why she's picked so often. Magnus picks up the haste rune, but can see tree. Pretty much at full mana. Living armor costs next to nothing. Uh, May should use living armor a bit more on his own, on his allies, but their allies are not getting harassed. And actually, this trialing by Empire is doing a surprising amount of work. But considering Weaver is not really farming the best, and considering Darkseer is such an experienced, dependent hero, uh, again, I'm not really too sure how this trial will affect them in the long run. I guess if they really shut down the Luna, they might be okay. But here comes the Venice Scale. SS is just going to have to back off. They bait the Surge out as well. Stormwolf going to fly back in. SS is going to take the fall. Golbach trying to go back on the offensive, but Link is just going to pop the south. Looks like Crit going to try to take one for his team. Decay will be used. Decay is up. He should use Decay. He does use Decay. He does pick up the kill. As you can see, Decay does have the reduced damage down. Darkseid picks up the kill on Venomancer as well as looks like Weaver. Darkseid did take the fall, but was able to teleport back in there. Get the iron shell up onto the weaver, so three to one in favor of Empire. Actually, it's two to one because Calculus suicided to neutrals, but as it still goes onto the click screen, and you can see Shockwave just uh, that ignores the damage block. So Tree, probably the best hero in the game at the moment. Actually, Bloodseeker is the best game, best hero in the game. Meanwhile, you know, Queen of Pain stalking your target gets an easy kill up on Calculus. Queen of Pain winning this lane with relative ease with that Shadow Strike. I imagine she's ball carrying it up as well. I wish they'd just make a freaking crow model. So we can have the bottle crow. But I guess we have Navi's Weasel Crow. Meanwhile, you know, Darkseer. With Weaver, Iron Shell popped a little bit late. They are going to go for Luna. No, they're just going to back off. Smart move, because Sven was waiting in the woodwork. And Weaver, not really the tankiest of heroes, abysmal stats. I mean, if he was tanky, then Weaver would pretty much be the most broken hero in the game. But he yeah, has abysmal stats for a reason. The crit just waiting around with the full mana. You can see support Sven doing a lot of work in this game. And he actually, you know, doing s some stuff. But the top lane is pretty much lost for side of DD. Luna at least is getting more farm, actually even farm with the Weaver. And considering the bottom lane got a lot of kills, Empire actually pretty much winning every lane. I don't think they're winning mid, but it looks like the Surge is actually going to be baited out. I don't know about the Surge. Solar Pick is going to fly a nice Solar by Go Black as I Darkseer used the Iron Shell on the Undying, trying to get a bit more damage, but the Iron Shell does wear off on the Weaver right about now. Will Rise Escape, looks like Luna's going to pick up a kill on the Weaver, the damage block is going to come in, here comes the Surge as well. Weaver's going to turn around with the Shikuchi, so much chaos, and Weaver does pick up the kill. Damage block, OP Tree is actually the best hero in the game, I never doubted him for a second. Here comes Crit, trying to desperately clarity up, but still very far away from getting that Storm Bolt, and looks like Rise is going to be a lot of trouble with this Iron Shell Shikuchi combination. OP. This is why Weaver's banned all the time. As Darkseid trying to surge away, Rise just toying with the other team. But the Iron Shell and the damage block is going to come back. Rise is going to just barely avoid taking the fall. Here comes Lucent Beam. Picks off Weaver. Blur Bane went a little bit too aggressively. But it ain't Empire if they ain't being balls deep. As level 3 Lucent Beam does a shit ton of damage at this stage. SS going to get Lucent Beam in place but does survive with around 2 HP. Can he escape Luna so fast? One more hit. Does pick up the kill with Lucent Beam. Not even trying to wait out the surge. I think he actually could have picked up the kill. Level 1 surge. But now I think DD are in a pretty solid choice. Or solid situation. Luna's about to hit level 6. And Weaver, if he hits level 6, he'll get time lapse. Big whoop.
if Luna hits level 6 Eclipse, that actually is a big whoop. So I think DD overall are a pretty solid position in this bottom lane. Meanwhile, on the mid lane, Tree is level 7. Checking out the farm, you can see Tree 31 CS, Magnus 33. Magnus having no trouble at all with these farm. Gonna pick up the Arcane Boots as well as the bottle. Has been bottle currying it up, as I saw at a haste rune earlier. Meanwhile, Tree picks up the Gloves of Haste. Is it gonna go for Midas? Is it gonna go for Maelstrom? I mean, you can't really go for the uh, attack build tree anymore because 1.9 base attack time is just so ridiculously slow. But hey, I guess, I mean, if you were gonna mid a tree, might as well go for the base attack time. As Luna is in a very awkward position, very little mana, it looks like Crit gonna escape with that war cry. But Weaver is just going to town. Weaver does not want to commit too heavily. Gale catches two people, but here comes the teleport in by Sakshka. Here comes the skewer. Does he have a wrist play? He does three man wrist play this stage in the game. And that's going to be pretty much three man wipe for the side of Empire. Weaver does escape, does have enough mana for a couple more Shikuchis. Will he get the kill on Sashka, but doesn't have the Iron Shell to back him up anymore? He's just going to get the heck out of there. I agree with this move by Weaver. Even though a lot of heroes were low HP, he didn't have the Iron Shell to give him that increased DPS. If he did, then he could have gotten a couple more kills. Rise in an awkward position. Rise probably won't take the fall. Luna, keep in mind, does have still zero mana at this stage. Or has 90 mana, but not enough to cast anything important. And meanwhile, what is Tree doing? Tree trying to get an overgrowth gank set up, but now they know the tree is there. Haste rune has been spotted out. Nice ward placement by Rise. And Ryze's Dota IQ very, very strong. As looks like Ryze is going to find himself in a bad position. Going to get Leech Seated. Only level 3 Leech Seed. Actually went for level 4 Living Armor to keep himself in the lane. But here comes the tree. Cutting off the creep wave with that Iron Shell. Weaver doing a bunch of damage as well. And Link still not enough mana to catch, cast that Eclipse. So even though DD catching up in terms of the team fight, you can see Empire taking advantage of Luna's low mana cost. And of their relatively tanky heroes, Darkseer, pretty tanky, but the fact that Darkseer is getting so little experience at this stage. I mean, you can't really keep a Darkseer down in terms of farm. But if you delay it, that just means so much for your team. As you can see, undying skill builds are always very interesting to me. Some undyings, like Eternal Envy, go for max decay by 7. Some undyings, like me, go for max tombstone by level 7. And Golwak is going to go for that increased cooldown or reduced cooldown of the Sorb and might find himself in a bad position. Tombstone is going to be dropped. Here comes the Decay, but level 2 Sorb won't help him there. Not too sure what the reasoning behind maxing Sorb is in any situation by level 7. But here comes Scandal, going to root everybody to the ground with that Iron Shell, going to hit everybody for a bunch of damage. Rise is going to take the fall. And looks like Link going to be in awkward position as well. SS trying to juke does get the successful juke, going to get the vacuum back in, but that is going to cost SS's life. But they kill the Luna. I think that was well worth it in this scenario. And keep in mind, they do have a Queen of Pain, Queen of Pain, Bottle's Illusion Rune, but she's still very, very far away. Looks like Sashka is going to take the fall as well. Empire just running circles around with Darkseer and Weaver literally running a marathon. Meanwhile, Queen of Pain is in her own world, has the agility treads, is just free farming it up now that Windrunner finally made a rotation to the bottom lane. But DD just getting relentlessly pressured. And really solid play by Empire at this game. You can see experience graph in Empire's favor. Goal graph, they've only taken one tower, but you can see the goal graph is hugely in Empire's favor because of the Queen of Pain farming, because of that tower kill, and because of their hero kill advantage. Only one hero kill, but Scandal is going to get skewered right back. Solrip going to do a lot of killing for Scandal, but Scandal trying to get that reduced damage from the Living Armor will eventually take the fall. He can't escape. Better match so too good. And crit with that War Cry boost. Can he actually cast two Storm Bolts now? He can. GG. This game is over. Meanwhile, Funic picked up the point booster. Gonna go for the fast Aghanims, I imagine. Point booster, of course, gives her some nice stats to work with. Gives her some HP and mana. So she can stay in the battle a bit longer. Cast more spells. And just overall be more annoying, like Kunu Pain does like to do in a lot of these games. Checking out the net worth, you can see Queen of Pain and Tree actually have the highest net worth. Weaver actually has the second highest. They have 
done their job successfully keeping Luna down, but we see Undying takes the fall very, very easily in the mid lane by the relentless amount of stuns. And Crit does have one more clarity. He's probably just going to use it right now. So he can regen up back to full mana. So he can have two mana or two Storm Bolts if it really requires. We are actually going to go for all our tank build. Going to pick up the Tranquil Boots and have the Vip Booster. I don't think he'll go for Vanguard. He's just going to have the Vip Booster hold on to. It's pretty common back when Weaver and Spectre were regularly played, and now that we're seeing them a bit more, I mean, this could be more and more con, but just pick up the VIP booster. Not gonna go for the regen, and not gonna go for the regen for the ring health, just gonna pick up the early VIP booster for that increased HP, and then just gonna save that for a very late game heart. But VIP booster, 250 HP, definitely nothing to sneeze at, especially this early on. But Luna finally getting some room to farm up, still far away from the drums. About 850 gold from fishing the drums. Meanwhile, Tree did pick up the hand of mice. Gonna go for the mech. So utility based, so, utility based tree and actually doing a surprising amount of work. I may have underestimated you, Tree. Scandal one, one, and two, and here comes a pushing assault by Empire Squad. They are not gonna go for the late game like I thought they would with Living Armor and Weaver. They're actually going to go for a very aggressive tanking push strat. And that works because, you know, they're all so very tanky. But it looks like Funic going to be caught in a missable location. Going to get a reverse polarity to the face. Nice chain stun with the Stormbolt. Skewer, Venomous Gale. I think they did get the last hit. Venomancer got the Gale tick off. So Queen of Pain did take the fall. But they did use two ultimates for that kill. Crit is being pushed back. Weaver actually trying to go back in. Is just going to Shikuchi back out of there. We were so effective, but meanwhile, Queen of Pain and Weaver just buying time for the tower push to come in. But unfortunately, they, they're tanky, but they actually don't do any damage. Uh, that's a problem. Their only damage pretty much comes from the Queen of Pain and Iron Shell. Meanwhile, Tree approaching menacingly, like only a tree can do. I mean... There is a reason why trees are menacing. Have you ever read Shredder's lore? I mean, those trees, those were out of control. As we were gonna dodge a Stormbolt in Shikuchi phase, Tombstone is gonna be dropped. And they are gonna cut off the creep play of level 2, 3 Tombstone at this stage. Means that that Tombstone will hang around for 20 seconds or so. But still, the tower is dying so very slowly. Leech Seed up on Luna, as it looks like Weaver is going to get surged. Here comes the Eclipse doing a bunch of damage. Link taking a bunch of damage from the Storm as well. Here comes the Overgrowth, but again, they have no damage to speak of. Now that Tombstone is down, Queen of Pain is actually going to get skewered back in. SS is going to take the fall. Funic is going to take the fall again. Funic unable to make too much happen despite his free farm. Didn't level up Blink, and Weaver tried to do a bunch of work with the Iron Shell. Did pick up two kills, but paid for it with his life. Two kills for the Weaver. Worth it for the Weaver, not worth it for Empire as a team. Queen of Pain actually just buys back and sees a huge creep wave. I guess it's more worth it to find this creep wave. Um, how much is the buyback? 450 gold? Yeah, he's going to pick up 450 gold, and I think he was dead for around 25 30 seconds, so probably worth it in this scenario. And he still gets the experience. But still, DD, they're taking an edge because Empire, they're tank. But they do no damage. Meanwhile, DD, they do a bunch of damage. They have Venomous Scale, they have Eclipse, they have Lucent Beams, they have the Luna Aura, they have Sven, who does not skill his ultimate at level 6, just skilling that Warcry to get that bonus armor. And you can see how much quicker DD can take down towers next to Empire. Blink it by Magnus with this reverse polarity. Well, here comes the Power Shot as well as the Shockwave. Doesn't kill the Weaver, but they kill the undying and they kill the tower well worth it and now i think dd are in a pretty solid position they're winning 14 to 10. meanwhile queen of pain despite getting free farm has unable to make too much happen in this game one two and one so we'll see if empire start to turtle it up not too sure what weaver's saving up for could be going for that radiance but it would be a very late radiance Meanwhile, crit again, level 4 Stormbolt. Level 4 Ward is being picked up by the Venomancer, getting that level 2 into Gale, or into the Poison Sting rather than Max and Gale, because Gale, 
I mean, it just costs so much mana now that you can pretty much only use it once in a fight and still have enough mana for the Gale anyway. I mean, as you scale it up, I think the mana cost does go down. You know, Empire gonna go for Roshan. No wards scouting out the movement by Empire. Actually, they did have a ward. They had a ward right here. But I don't know if they want to take the Roshan without Reverse Blade or without Eclipse. And that seems to be their thought process. But again, no damage. Not even Medallion. So Roshan taking a decent amount of time to fall. Will DD get in position to try to contest this? No, Magnus is just going to scout out the illusions with the Shockwave, but you can see they're tanky, but they're doing no damage. Mechanism finished up on the tree, actually not using the Mighty. Probably just cool down while they're taking the Roshan. They are going to eventually clean up the Roshan. They used a lot of time for that. Meanwhile, Magnus is able to get the heck out of there. But in the meantime, Link did a nice job pressing the bottom tower, able to clean that up. Looks like Link might be in a bit of trouble. Will there be a vacuum? I don't think Darkseer is too high leveled. And actually, Darkseer going to get eclipsed and going to die. Tombstone trying to be dropped to absorb some of the hits of Eclipse. But the zombie's not enough. Dyer's top tower is under attack. As I'm not actually sure if the zombies get hit by the Eclipse, because zombies are magic immune, but... Chain Frost still bounces to them as Weaver and Queen of Pain gonna go back in. Venomite's ultimate doing so much damage. And here comes the Risplarity. Funnick is in over his head. He's gonna take the fall. Weaver gonna get the overgrowth to help him, but Magnus just is gonna scare the heck out of there. Link gonna teleport out. Damage and zero stuns. And actually, that's another fall of Empire's lineup. Aside from overgrowth and vacuum, they literally have zero stuns. Vacuum 20 second cooldown, Overgrowth 80 second cooldown. You can just teleport out, and the fact that they do no damage means that you can teleport out with pretty much zero fear. Zero fear. So, not too sure what Empire is thinking with this lineup, but I don't think it actually does anything. And I think they're finding out right now how little it does. <laughs> but Empire known for making Weird picks work. They are still pretty much the only users of Bane, and Bane been remarkable here for them. They still consistently pick clinks. So they definitely have sort of stable heroes that they can make work very, very well. But still, it's not looking good this game. Hero level, uh, pretty much even overall. But Weaver not having too much farm. Actually, Iron Shell still a lot of farm. Here comes Dust Appearance. It's going to be dropped. Stromboll going to fly back in. They are going to kill the Aegis on Bullier Brain. He's actually going to time lapse it away. Nicely done. But Reverse Polarity going to be up relatively soon. Looks like uh, SS is going to get skewered back. He's going to take the fall. One more hit by Luna. One more hit by Luna. Does pick up the kill. Here comes the Overgrowth. And the zombie is approaching menacingly as he does drop the Decay. Doesn't have the Tombstone up. Is not going to use the Tombstone. What was the cooldown? He does have the tombstone up. Not too sure why he didn't use it. He's using it very, very low late as I guess it was on cooldown, but Rise is gonna take the fall. They do have enough damage to at least kill Rise. But here comes the Risk Lady, here comes Crit, does have the cleave up, does have empower up, doesn't have the cleave up, has empower. And Magnus picks up a triple kill. Magnus Sven still pretty much as potent as it has been. So Empire, definitely in a terrible situation right now. Their Weaver's dying. He's still very far away from Relic and finally gets a Relic when he finally gets a Radiant. The heroes on the side of the Radiant are going to be very, very tanky. Luna picks up a free Yasha. Windrunner is going to have the mechanism complete. Venomite has a Bracer as well as Strength Treads. Magnus has the Drums as well as Blink Dagger as well as 3k gold in the bank. Even supports Ven getting relatively far in meal. Empire. Queen of Pain as the Agnum Scepter, 900 gold, but it's going to be a pretty light Agnum Scepter considering how much free farm she had up on the top lane. Tree has Vlad's going for pretty much all aura items with that hand of Midas. But the lack of damage in these team fights. Empire are able to survive these team fights, but they just can't make too much happen in them. And eventually they just fall under their relentless onslaught. And Magnus, and there's a reason why he's first pick first spam material. He's just been putting in a lot of work. 817. As looks like Weaver scouts out the fact that Windrunner has next to no mana. Gonna go on the offensive calculus. Does have enough mana. It's gonna Windrun TP out. 
gonna at least waste 150 gold by the Windrunner, so there's that going for the Weaver. You know, what would Magnus go for? I don't think he has to go for a Refresher. He could go for a bit of damage. Could even go for something like Shiva's to give him that burst of the slow. But you can pretty much go for whatever he wants in this scenario. Mm. You know, SS really starting to feel the pinch. Level 9 Darks are 22 minutes in the game. Not gonna have a wall up for a decent amount of time. You all crit farming the ancient stack with that one point in the cleave, but does have the empower. And support Sven. I mean, if there's a free stack, he will just farm it. So support Sven. Definitely not useless. Not as useful as carry Sven, but definitely not useless as a support. I mean, he scales, which is a lot better than most supports can say. You know, I'm just taking a look at the gold graph. Radiant have three towers. Dire have three towers as well, but the 3k gold advantage on the back of the 9 kill difference. It would be much bigger if Rain took down the Roshan experience graph heavily in the Rain's favor. As you can see, 10k, that means much more than the gold graph in this stage. But keep in mind, Empire, I think if they can just turtle out, they might have a solid late game. But again, Sven, Magnus, and Luna pretty much just need one versus polarity, and that's the problem placed against Magnus. All you need is one, and you can turn the game around. It's like an Enigma black hole, except you can't channel it. And it's on a strength hero. And he has ridiculously long initiation range. It also gives cleave to his carries. And has a solid nuke. So yeah, when you look at it like that, there's a reason why Magnus is considered probably the most imba hero in the game with bat. But I still maintain bad needs a buff. Only had like 43% after he mac. Bad needs a buff. Buff bat, please. Funny trying to go on the offensive, but Luna just too fast. And <laughs> I mean, Luna could just teleport out. I mean, the thing about Empire's lineup, they don't even. DD doesn't even need to farm BKB. They, they can pretty much just go all offensive if they want. Because. What sort of defensive items do they need? Sven just gonna go for BKB just because. Um, Luna doesn't need BKB at all. And here comes Magnus lurking in the shadows, trying to get that blink initiation. Gonna get and power off onto the Luna. You can see one hit of Luna means about 150 HP, 100, 200 HP drained from the Undying. It does 227 damage at this stage of the game. Pretty ridiculous with that and power on. What level is he in power? Level 4 in power, because, you know, Magnus is level 16. Definitely the highest level in the game. We all net worth, Magnus leagues above everybody else, and 8.8k gold on a tree is like 4k gold on any other hero. As Weaver is going to get shackled in place, Calculus manning up against Weaver. Um, might want to think better of this. Actually, has Windrun if she really wants to get out of there. And Weaver realizes that can't actually kill Windrunner. And keep in mind, Windrunner didn't even pop Windrun. Didn't even pop Focus Fire. Didn't even pop Mecha. Meow Crit just continue to farm Ancient Stacks. DD can pretty much slow roll it. Because Weaver's still very far away from Radiance, I imagine. It's going to have the Relic up relatively soon. But they can pretty much solo roll it, try to get the map control for Roshan, and then try to push in. I think in the ultra late game, Empire has a pretty strong shot. But in the mid game, it's pretty much all DD. And the fact that Magnus is so far ahead, has 5k gold floating around. Or around 5k gold. Let's see, what's the, what is he going to build? He's going to build AC. And he's going to have it in about, you know, in about 600 gold. You know, invisible Magnus scouting out the position, no sentry ward. So this could be very, very grim for Empire if they decide to clump up right about now. And looks like Empire are actually going to clump up right about now. Tree is invisible. And here comes the reverse! Three-man reverse! Venomous Scale, Venomancer, Ultimate, and the Skewer means instant death for one hero. Queen of Pain is going to die very slowly. 
and Tree's gonna jump in with the Eclipse, and then he realizes, oh, my ulti doesn't do anything. It holds people in place. And man, was I wrong when I said Tree would be the new Emba hero. I have egg on my face after that. Dyer's middle tower is under and that was pretty much a team wipe. Weaver can farm away all he likes. But if his team continuously gets wiped, really not too much that Empire can do. As here comes the blink in skewer, gonna clean up the weaver or try to clean him up, but they wasted the TP of Weaver because he time lapsed it back to avoid the damage. And I think Luna lolled in team chat. And Weaver, keep in mind, he's pretty much out of mana, so he's gonna go back to the Fallon or to survive, so that's gonna waste even more time. And look at the glaives just going to work at the moment. Is able able to easily clean down. Weaver's going to take the fall. Stormbolt Queen of Pain's going to take the fall. And man, Funnick is just not having good series so far. GG's called by Empire. And DD take a convincing game too. I don't know if Empire was necessarily outplayed, but they were like so heavily outpicked that I don't think any lineup could. I mean, if it was Navi versus like, I don't know, some tier 3 Dota team, Navi would have trouble winning with this lineup against DD's lineup. So, DD, evening it up 1-1 against probably one of the top three Western teams at the moment in the form of Empire. Definitely one of the top five Western teams at the moment in the form of Empire. So, DD must be feeling pretty pleased, but they definitely want to get this series, get themselves closer to the pretty hard cash prize presented by the Dota 2 League. I have been Bivon, thank you for watching, and I'll be back in Game 3 very, very soon. So, see you then. Peace.